Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be focusing on trigonometry. And yeah, I found this for challenging questions. Um, as always, I hope that you guys try it first before looking at the solutions. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so for question number one, we are told to solve the equation cos square x plus 3 sine x cos x equals to negative 1. Yeah, so the first thing I would usually do would be to move everything to one side. So we have cos square x plus 3 sine x cos x plus 1 is equal to 0. Right? And if you realize here, 1 here is more like of a unique term, not unique, like it's different from the rest. And if you remember, sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1, right? it's like an identity. So we can rewrite the equation as cos square x plus 3 sine x cos x plus sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 0. Right? And then if we just combine like terms, we have 2 cos square x plus 3 sine x cos x plus sine square x equals to 0, right? And from here, you'll notice that we can actually factor it out, right? We can factor it out, and so if we factor it out, we have 2 cos x plus sine x into cos x plus sine x. And this all will give us equal to 0, right? And from here, we just have to solve it like usual. So we have 2 cos x equals to negative sine x. And hence, tangent x is equals to negative 2. And here, similarly, we will have cos x equals to negative sine x. And hence, tangent x is equals to negative 1. Uh, and notice here that tangent x is equals to negative 2 and tangent x is equals to negative 1. They both are negative, that means if we draw out the four quadrants, uh, the way I normally memorize it is add sugar to coffee. So the first quadrant all will be positive, in the second and only sign, in the third tangent, and in the fourth uh, it will be cosine. Right? And so if tangent is negative, that means it will lie in the second and in the fourth. Right? And so here, if we just take the shift tangent negative 2, we will get the A. The reference one, and we'll be able to get 63.4. Yeah, notice first that you should not directly shift tangent negative 2, but instead shift tangent 2 because you want to get the A, right? you want to get the point where it's always positive first because then you'll be able to find the uh, angle at the second and the fourth quadrant. Right? What happens if you directly take negative 2 is that it'll just give you one answer. But in fact, there's actually there could actually be more than one answer to the question uh, to the equation that you're solving, right? All right. So here we have x one is equals to one hundred eighteen minus sixty three point four, and that will give us one hundred sixteen point six degrees, and x two will give us three sixty minus sixty three point four, which is equals to two hundred ninety six point six. Okay. And here alpha will be equal to forty five. Shift tangent negative one is forty five. Shift tangent one is forty five. So hence x1 will be equals to 135 degrees and x2 will be equal to 315 degrees right uh, always take note that if you're dealing with degrees or if you're dealing with angle it's always to one decimal place right it's always to one decimal place and if it's money it's always to two decimal places and this also apply to bearings and do not forget about that because i think uh, IGCC uh, marks that pretty rigorously so if you mistake the decimal places on the significant figures, you might be deducted. Alright, okay, that is it for question number one. Moving on to question number two. Alright, so for question number two, we have proved that x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Alright, so the first thing we will have to do will be to square x itself. So x squared will be a squared sine square x minus 2ab sine x cos x plus b square cos square x. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. And here if we just have y square, that will give us a square cos square x plus 2ab sine x 
cos x plus um, b square and sine square x. And here, since they want us to find x square plus y square, we just add them up, right? So we have x square plus y square is equal to so a square sine square x plus a square cos square x. So we just need to add them up, right? So we have a square. And if you realize, we can factor it out because it's like terms. We have a square to like terms. So we have sine square x plus cos square x. Right? And here, negative 2ab sine x cos x plus 2ab sine x cos x. So that's cancelled out. And here we have another b square into cos square x plus sine square x. Right? And remember that sine square x plus cos square x is equals to 1. So x square plus y square is equals to a square plus b square that's all therefore we proved it all right moving on to question number three all right so moving on to question number three three i think will be actually like the hardest out of the four i believe because like you really need to know how to like manipulate the values all right so it's given that cos x x plus cot x is equal to 3 and therefore they want us to evaluate the value of cos x minus cot x and cos x. Alright, so first of all, in order to get the first part of the question, what we would do would be, um, one thing to remember would be um, a plus b into a minus b is equal to a squared plus b squared. Right, so with that being said, if we put cos x plus cot x and we times that with a minus b so in that case will be cos x minus cot x and therefore since we times cos x minus cot x in the first part of the equation on the left hand side we need to do that with the right hand side so it will be fair and balanced so we have 3 um, cos x minus cot x All right so here in other words it will be a square minus b square equals to 3a minus b, right? Alright, so let's just write it out first. We have cos x square x minus cot square x equals to 3 times cos x minus cot x. I realize this is what they want. Alright, so let me just write the identities. We have sine square x plus cos square x is equals to 1 right and if we divide here everything by sine square x we will then have 1 plus um cot square x is equals to cos x square x and now I realize that cos x square x minus cos square a uh, uh, minus cot square x itself will give us 1 and therefore this one is actually equal to 1 is equals to 3 Cos x minus cot x, and therefore cos x minus cot x is equal to 1 by 3. Alright, moving on to part b. Alright, for part b, we have to do like a similar method to part a, where we, we still have to manipulate the values. Notice that in part a, where we need to find cos x minus cot x. We times it by cos x minus cot x. And therefore, we were able to like eliminate cos x square x minus cot square x. Here, we will be doing something similar. We will be using our knowledge of identities. Uh, remember that cos x is equal to 1 by um, sine x. And cot x is cos x over sine x. Right? This is because tangent x is sine x over cos x and cot x is 1 by tangent x. Right? And so this will give us equals to 3. And therefore, 1 plus cos x itself is equals to 3 sine x. Yeah, nothing fancy here because they are like terms, so we directly can add them and I just cross multiply. Right? And so, 3 sine x minus 1 is equals to cos x. Okay, so while I was actually doing this question, I was actually stuck between two methods. Doing 
square the first equation or do we square the second equation? Because if you realize they are both the same, it's just that one uh, eliminates cos x and the other eliminates um, sine x. Yeah? The correct answer would be to square the first equation. It's because that we want to find, uh, eventually find the answer for cos x, right? And so if we actually square the first equation, we will, we will get 9 sine square x. But if we square the si uh, second equation, we will still have values in sine x. Right. Notice that sine square x can be converted to cos square x, but then sine x cannot be converted to cos x. And therefore, we want to uh, eliminate any sine x possibility. And so the correct answer will be to square the first equation. So right now, we will have cos square x plus 2 cos x plus 1 is equals to 9 sine square x. And remember that sine square x is 1 minus cos square x. Right. So we have, have right here cos square x plus 2 cos x, eight, sorry, plus 1 is equals to 9 minus 9 cos square x, right? And so here, if we just simplify, we have 10 cos square x plus 2 cos x minus 8 is equals to 0, right? Realize that 2, we can divide everything by 2. Let me just continue it here so we have more space. So we have 5 cos square x plus 2 cos x minus 4 is equal to 0. And therefore, we can just factor it out. We have 5 cos x, we have cos x here. Let me just try this out. See, um, 4, 1. So we have 4 cos theta. And we have 5 cos theta here. Uh, and that will give us, uh, oh, wait, I just realized something, my bad, uh, I forgot to divide this by 2. Okay, so this was actually only cos theta, because uh, we need to divide everything by 2 here. So we have 5 cos x minus 4, and cos x plus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, cos x is equal to negative 1, or cos x goes to 4 over 5, right? And so we're given two choices for questions, uh, two choices for a solution. We have negative 1 or 4 over 5. Now, if I say negative 1 is cancelled or negative 1 is not applicable, that will be because like, in the first place, we chose to work with every of our angle here in the first quadrant, right? And it means if everything is in the first quadrant, regardless of the value of x we get, it must be positive. And therefore, that is why 4 over 5 is the answer here and negative 1 not all right moving on to question number four all right so for the last part of the question question number four we're told to solve the equation again all right so right here we have four plus three cot x which is equal to cos x over sine x multiplied into sine x over cos x is equal to two right so here we have 4 sin x plus 3 cos x over sin x. And we multiply this by sin x over cos x is equal to 2. Right? Right, so now if we just multiply everything in, we have 4 sin square x plus 3 sin x cos x is equals to 2 sin x cos x. Yeah, notice it's just that I just multiply it into, and I just cross multiply uh, 2 into sin x and cos x, therefore we have this one equation. So right now we have 4 sin square x plus sin x cos x is equals to 0, right? And notice that we can factor sin x out because it's a like term. So we have sin x, 4 sin x, plus cos x is equal to 0, right? And so, if we have sin x goes to 0, and we have 4 sin x goes to negative cos x, right? And therefore, cot x is equal to negative 4, and tangent x equals to negative 1 by 4, because cot is a uh, reciprocal of tangent. Alright, so let's move on here. So, first of all, 
if tangent x is negative 1 over 4, we know that it's in the uh, add sugar to the coffee second and fourth quadrant. So if we have tangent shift tangent of the calculator shift tangent of 1 by 4, which will give us the A, and that will be just take my calculator 14.0. Right. And so if it's in the second quadrant, it will be 1654. Okay, one. 6.0 degrees and in the last quadrant it will be uh, 360 minus uh, 360 minus 14 three four six okay and but then notice something notice that the angle uh, we are actually uh, the question accepts from negative 360 to 360 itself and therefore x3 can be negative 14 and x4 will be negative 1 and 4 right and this without a sketch is very confusing so let me just draw it out first so we have here and we have um, the base angle or the reference angle is 14 right and so if we take it at the second quadrant it will give us here 14 and therefore we take um, counterclockwise and that's why we get 180 minus 14 and the fourth quadrant one we take all the way up here which is 360 minus 14 right but if we want to take it in the negative region you want to take it as negative because it's x is greater than or equal to negative 360 up to 360 itself we need to take it clockwise right and we need to take it clockwise that's why the first reading is 14 itself right the first reading is 14 because remember that in the fourth quadrant and in the second quadrant tangent is negative Right, so x3 is negative 14. And that's why if we take a trip again and we go all the way up here, right, this is already 180 and we place it with 14 again, and that's why we get 194, which is in the second quadrant. But remember, it must be negative because not only are we dealing with a negative angle here, in both of these quadrants, tangent of any angle should be negative as well. Right, and so if I actually shifted this question, if I shifted this question and said that the angles accepted will only be negative 180 up to 360 then negative 194 will not be included because we can only read to up to here we can only read up to here so this one the, the addition of 14 will not be included yep and all right the last part i want to discuss about um, this question right here because if you realize uh, we actually have an equation where sine x is equal to zero but if you actually realize i did not compute for that and why so and before we move on to that, um, uh, take note that for x2, x3, and x4, I did not put up 0, 0.0, which, oh, because I just now stated that it must be in one decimal place, yeah? Uh, do not forget that. I'm just put it, in, put it here right now. Yep. Um, please do not forget to put it into one decimal place, as this might, you might really lose much for it, right? Because it stated the additional math syllables, all right? And uh, yeah, let's discuss the last question and uh, the last question, the last equation, which is uh, sine x is equal to zero. And why did I not um, calculate it? Right. Uh, recall that this is how a sine graph looks, right? Oh wait, long ink. <laughs> recall that this is how a sine graph looks, right? So we have here, and then we have this and here, right? This one is one eighty, and this one is three sixty. And therefore, at what angle is uh, sine 0? It is 0 at uh, sine x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. x is equal to 180. And x is equal to 360. Now, this is why sometimes I say that do not rely too much on your calculator and that understanding is key. And like the previous example, why do I directly not like shift tangent, the negative answer? Right? Why do I? shift it to the positive answer it's because we need to understand about the quadrants and here likewise why do i not shift directly uh sine zero like shift sine zero that will only give us zero it does not give us other possibilities right and so what i want you to realize here is that these answers uh, can't actually be included in the equation right because if you realize um sine x if you put it uh for sine square x plus sine x cos x if you actually input it this into this equation then you will get zero right because for sine 
sine square x plus sine x cos x. The zero plus zero times one will also give us zero. And if you actually even factor it out, that will also still give us zero. Right? But this is where it gets really, really tricky. Right? This is where it gets really, really tricky. Because if you actually realize, um, if we actually input this back into the original equation, uh, let's just say this as an example, 4 sine x plus 3 cos x, yep, we're safe, right? 0 plus 1 times 3 will give us 3. But notice that if we put sine x and 0 as here, this would, would give us um, 0 as a denominator, right? And if you have a numerator divided by a 0 as a denominator, that would give us math error. Right. And that is why we completely disregarded sine x equals to 0 as an equation. Because if sine x is equal to 0, then the whole equation at this will not even exist in the first place. Because if you divide by 0, that will give you a math error. And yeah, I hope that clears up why uh, we did not compute for sine x is equal to 0. Uh, this type of question where like you, know, you disregard one equation, I rarely see it in IGCSE. Uh, after doing like quite a lot of past papers, I rarely see it. Usually, uh, they only test you for like a negative quadrant, like just not the negative three sixty to three sixty. Or sometimes they manipulate the angle inside. So instead of x, they put it two x or two x plus ten. Remember, you should always adjust the range if uh, that is what happens. But yeah, this type of understanding where you actually like need to look back at the original equation is more applicable for logarithms. Because sometimes after you solve for a value of x in a logarithmic equation, they expect you to test it back into the original equation if it works. Because if the set x value that you got, if you input it back and the overall, yeah, let's just say log um, 2x plus 1, right? And if you, let's say you get a val two values of x, right? Remember that this thing, must always be positive, right? And let's say the value of x you got, which solves the equation, is negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, plus 1 is negative, one, uh, negative 9. And therefore, that is not applicable because you can't log a negative number, right? Because if you actually remember log b, to the base of a is equal to c, right? So a to the power of c is equal to b, right? So if you take a to the power of any number, it can't be negative. That's, what, that's why b cannot be a negative number. Right. This is usually applicable for logarithm, but I rarely see this for uh, trigonometry videos. That is why I chose this question because I found it really, like, it really tests your evaluation as well as like, your understanding of the topics in math in general as well. Yeah, so, but yeah, I hope this is good practice and like also it reminds you that this type of techniques and these types of concepts can be tested in every topic and not only like, a specific topic. And yeah, I hope you guys found this session useful. As always, I will be putting the sites and the references in the description down below. And yeah, I've started this like really, really good uh, website on IGCSE, like, mainly on like uh, math and science, as well as like revision tips, mark scheme tips, like uh, how do you use the syllables, how to use examiner reports, and all the notes and all, like, all of that cool stuff will be in the description down below. And yeah, I hope you guys found this useful. And yeah, see you on the next one.